Brace on. <laughs> Raging. Oh, oh. Damn, JC. Every single time. This will be the thumbnail then. Can I just do a thumbnail shot here? Yeah. Uh, okay. Alright, so JC, we're at your shop now, and I kind of just wanted to get a little bit of an update here. What have you changed? What have you acquired? What have you done? Actually, new cars that, that, that you didn't see last time, I think there's only two, uh, yeah, two here. Uh, one of them is the 1960 Corvette, which I bought in Puerto Rico, uh, and it's, it was from some uh, mayor there or something like that, or whatever. So uh, I brought it from over there. I thought it was really clean, really well done, very well restored. And I went a couple times out on it in the mornings and I found it to drive really nice. You know, it's automatic, it's not a four speed. I didn't mind that because I didn't want to be shifting. And it has power windows. Then I put air conditioning on it. Matching numbers and all that stuff. But uh, just a neat little drive, you know? It's got the hard top and the soft top. This has got to be a fun cruiser, though. Just a, just a nice car to not worry about going fast in, just to, just to ride. And then with a, with a big sidewalls, it rides smooth and solid. I mean, because this is like a, this is your baby. It's so clean. Yeah. You, you can't mess this one up. But no, but I drive them. I drive them anyways. I mean, I haven't driven th this one in a while, but uh, I drive them. And, uh, and I mean, the one thing that has been lost is the, the feel of a car with big sidewalls. And um, I, read, I read an article some years ago, maybe four or five years ago, where they hadn't been able, with all the electronics and everything, they hadn't been able to actually get the ride as smooth as it was when they had big sidewalls. I mean, potentially that's probably why everyone likes driving trucks and SUVs yeah. now, because you can run a bigger tire and it'll be really comfortable. Yeah, I mean, but uh, obviously it affects the handling. The handling is not going to be that good because, you know, you got to wobble there. But if you're not looking to, to road race it, it's, it, they're nice, you know? Yeah, this Very thing nice. is great. And, and it's a different experience. So you can never knock it because, you know, there, there's cars that are going to be... They, they all give you this different experience, and it's, it, they're, they're, it's all great, you know? I don't actually remember. Did we see this one before? I don't recognize this car. Okay. Let's talk about the BMW. I don't think this is here. I don't... Why does it say M2 here? Well, because I, I put it in there. It's just it was an M2 because uh, before the M2 came out, it was a 2002, but with the M motor, you know? So... So is this swapped? Yeah. Yeah, let me see, op op open up there, I think it's open. No, no, through here. Oh, up. oh, got it, okay. Oh. We had to pretty much fabricate everything to put air conditioner on it. <laughs> you gotta have your AC. And uh, it did, which well, I was surprised, I sent it to Active Auto Works. Very nice people here in, in Florida, in Miami. What and year is this? The 1974. I bought this car from a guy that built it for himself uh, and built cars for SEMA. And uh, he had done a lot of the work, had a, a couple little problems with acceleration and stuff like that, and we had to deal with it. So sent it to Active Auto Works. I, we put the air conditioning on it, but we had to fabricate everything, and it was really messy because we, there's not a lot of room. You had to fa fabricate the bracket 
and all that stuff. And the pulley, it can be a big pulley. And then the, the center console, with a, so it blows a lot of air with a modern type of system. And, and then find, you know, the little details to make it look more or less period, you know? Obviously not the radio, but you know, the, the little, but it's, 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 it's very cold. Uh, the car drives very, very solid and, and, and quick, a lot quicker than you would suppose. It's got headers and, uh, and they tuned it for performance and it did like 200 horsepower to the rear wheels or 210 or 205. Two or 205 or two, and he was extremely surprised. I think they were 180 or one, or they were 200 to the flywheel or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But it did that to the wheels, and it and it feels it, feels like it's very quick. Well, the, I mean, the thing about this also is because it's so much lighter than oh, the yeah. E30, yeah. right? The E30, I had an E30 late, uh, that you never saw that that was super clean, a one owner car. It, when I finished the car, it was mostly original paint and really nice with fairly low miles. I had like 50,000 miles. And I said, man, I'm gonna keep it. But when I, draw, when I drove it, I didn't like it. And, I, remind, and it remembered, I remembered how sluggish it felt back then when I had one and it was like five, six years old. And I, I, it's a great drive, solid cars, great handling cars, but I cannot, I, I just bothered me that it was so slow until it, you know, it went up in the RPM, you know, and all that stuff. It, it always did bother me a little bit. So that's why this one with that motor and uh, with the E30 M3 motor and the other one with the S52 supercharged, it's the, to me, the perfect package. No, they're not original, but they're much better driving car. Can we take a look at your new race car? Yeah, this one, yeah. It's this one. This one, yeah. Oh, it's actually Juan Pablo Montoya's See, car. yeah. Friend of mine, Alex Olio, Google best men's clothing store in Miami, and he's number one. He's the name of his place is Artigiano, and his name is Alex Olio, he's one of my very best friends. He had done some, some uh, suits for Juan Pablo Montoya, or, um, and he actually did it the year that he won the last Indy 500. This one came up for sale and I wanted, you know, I, I like Juan Pablo Montoya, the way he drove and all that stuff. So he got me together with Juan Pablo Montoya because this car was all original, an original uh, motor to the car and everything, but it was thrown together to be sold after it saved, it, it raced, you know? I wanted to make it right and he hooked me up with Tim McKeon in, uh, in North Carolina. Great, 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 great guy, which was in the, with uh, Chip Ganassi racing team and then he opened his own shop. So he went through the car, we took out the motor, had it rebuilt, it did 800 and uh, not maxed out because you know we wanted to last. Can we take a look at it? Sure, it did 830 horsepower or something like that. So went through the whole car and stuff and went through the brakes the shocks and everything and the setup so it would run right and so it's actually built to be able to be road race road race right now oh so this is a road race car this, this is car not was a, a short track car and it already had the big brakes and the way you know when uh with these nascars whether they are um if they're a short track car from what i know if they're a short track car or a road race car they'll have the big brakes if they are a speedway car, you don't need those big brakes. So they have smaller brakes that I have somewhere in there. But this one had the big brakes uh, and it was a short track car, not a road race car. But a short track car is a lot closer to a, to, to a road race car. But like it's set up right now for road race. It, it's set up for road race, correct. With the brakes for road race and... But, but like in terms of like the camber oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so are you going to take this onto the oh, track? No, we ha I have, I have. Oh, okay. I have already, I have, I've taken it a few times. So what he did also, he put a, a, a passenger seat on it. Mm -hmm. To put the passenger seat, you gotta reroute the gas line. See that red line there, mm -hmm. the red fuel line? You have to bend it, they're a lot of fun. Uh, has your wife ridden with you in yeah, this thing? Yeah, yeah, my wife, my daughter, my son, um, my son-in-law, you know, I take in everybody, but it's, it's, they are so nice. I suppose since they don't have as much downforce as maybe a wing car or something like that, you, it's easier to relate to the speed of the car 
and get used to it from driving a regular car on the track to a NASCAR. So what year did this actually compete? This is an actual race car. This car competed in, I think the, the years here, I forget the year right now, but they stamp them. This was, I think this is what they called the car of tomorrow. I'm not sure. No, I don't wanna. I don't even remember if I saw this car last time. I don't know if this was I don't here. think so. Oh, so this is uh, uh, I mean, You know what, maybe, I'm not sure. I don't even know. So this is Jeff Gordon's? Yeah, Jeff Gordon's car. Yeah, Jeff Gordon car. And was this an oval car? This was an oval car. And another thing for people to know is, which is pretty cool, is when, when it's an oval car, look at the width here on the fender and look at the width here. It's a lot wider on one side than the other one because the car's gonna be turning. Oh. So, you see? But when they make it, when they make it a uh, road race car, they gotta re they got, you gotta change the, the rear uh, differential housing because it's offset longer to one side than the other one for, the, for, for turning only on one direction, right uh, left hand. And then you gotta change the A-arms and the suspension that's also offset. And then you gotta, you gotta make it square so it turns left and right. What do people think when you bring this to the track day? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, what's pretty crazy is that I put it like in the uh, intermediate and then you're passing a street Miata and stuff like that. And this thing is just crazy, the noise, you know? And they, they really pull so hard, man. You cannot believe this is an, uh, a normally aspirated car when it gets to a certain RPM and it makes a lot of noise. I'm pretty sure it's scary, you know, to, to you know. And it's still, is it a four speed? Four speed, four speed, yeah. I mean, but with that much power, it doesn't matter. You're still going so fast. Forget, yeah, you just don't let that, but because it ha hardly has any power under 4,500 RPM, you know, it doesn't have a lot of power. It starts pulling right around four or something, you know? But then it'll pull right, you know, 3,500 or so. Maybe, I don't remember, 3,500 or so, it, does, it has very little power, but when it gets to the power band, oh, hold on, very, very, it's, it's so interesting to see this kind of wing, too, with the gurney flap. You know, what, when I see the modern cars, it doesn't look anything like this car at all. And, and just so people know also is that when you go to that driving experience with, a, with a, a Richard Petty driving experience, stuff like that, they, they, they don't have real NASCAR motors in there. You know, they probably have a 350 Chevy with, oh, half of the horsepower, you know, or something like that for longevity and stuff. These, these motors are finicky. They have very small, uh, they, they're not made to just sit and stuff like that. You know, they're like, a, obviously. They have very thin, the, the, the rings on the pistons are very thin. They're almost like a, like a blade, like a shaving blade. And uh, so, they're, so you can lose compression easily and stuff like that. You gotta be starting them and turning them, you know, once in a while and stuff like that, if not, you'll have problems with them. And the valve springs are so stiff, you don't wanna leave that valve spring compressed a long time. But, so when you go to the, dri so to the driving experience, the car is set up, so you let go of the, ga of, of the steering wheel and the car turns left by itself. Because they want, they, they, do, they try to make it super safe and then they put a motor that you maybe top out at 120 or something, I don't know. Because uh, uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, in terms of old race cars, these are still relatively easy for you to run and maintain compared to like a old Formula One car and or the, something. And the best thing is, and see, oh, by the way, he, he left all these parts, so he left it so it, they wouldn't get damaged in transport. Because I haven't driven it after it came back from a refresh. And anyways, um, the good thing about these cars is there's a lot of parts for them. But they were specific, like the motor, they keep logs, these people are, ex <laughs> They're very detailed and they keep logs on that build on that motor. So you go to that motor, that number, and if you have somebody inside Chip, inside Chip Ganassi or whatever that's got the record, the records from the build, will say, oh yeah, yeah, that, the, the piston number was da 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 da, and the, uh, and the rod was this, and the piston rings were that, and the, the, they're just not thrown around, you know, they, they're custom built motors to their specs. And no. from one motor to another, and one year to the other, the, the, you know, the pistons won't fit and... This is such an impressive 
type of racing. Uh, for those of you guys who've never been to NASCAR, you just can't really grasp what this is like unless you're actually there. The fact that they're running around, these college athletes, when these cars come in, they have to take these huge jacks and they have to uh, manually jack up the car to change the tires. And on top of that, oh my God, this, these things get destroyed every single race. You know, after just one race, you have to essentially change so many body panels on this. And NASCAR is the only place I've ever been to where they use the baseball bat to fix the car in the pits. You know, what they do is they stuff. And first they roll of all, it. <laughs> yeah, they roll, they roll it. If, if the fender is cutting the tire, what they do is they stick a baseball bat in there and then they roll it. Or if they need to hit it, they just use the baseball bat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and another thing is that the, the parts, the, the hoods for these cars and the fenders and all that stuff, they don't come pre-made. There's a guy actually, an, an artist, rolling and putting it and rolling. And I was in one of the shops and it's, it's impressive because the guy will put the hood on and then take it off and put it on and take it off and, put, and get it the right so everything fits really, really, really tight so the air doesn't catch anything. And I would, I would venture to say that in a, let's say in a 25 car field from the first place to the last place car, the lowest horse, horsepower car maybe has 20 horsepower less, maybe 15 horsepower less than the highest horsepower motor. And I, you know, it's a very, very, very tight racing, very tight racing. It tells you, it tells you what a specific type of talent you have to have. When a guy like Juan Pablo Montoya, that is by many accounts, one of the best pure drivers ever. This guy, I mean, even Paul Tracy was saying that, that if you just throw him a car without the data and stuff like that, and everybody just gets a car and they're the same cars, he'll go for Juan Pablo Montoya. But, uh, but even a talented guy like that with so much talent, won very few races. Very, very difficult to win and very, a, a steep learning curve looks like right yeah yeah i mean that's the fun part of it you know also when you enter something like the daytona 500 we've been a couple times before you know however many people enter and only maybe six will finish which is the craziest thing you know because it's a, it's a, like a game of attrition you know it doesn't matter if you're last place you know you could be first place the next lap because of uh incidents or whatever you gotta be good yeah. you gotta be good you know then you know i mean you could be an excellent amateur driver but this is next level stuff all that pro stuff is you know you could think you could have a little bit of talent and stuff like that but uh in one of uh one of the videos that mario andretti is one of the guys that guys that talks is of getting faster and stuff like that you listen to that video documentary and how to start racing and the principles of racing it says take very small short vacations because you know you need to be like constantly driving and driving and driving and driving to to get better and better at, at that level you know being one of the best or driving professionally uh well thank you so much again for showing us your collection uh it's always great to see this um you have quite the collection do whatever feels right for you and don't worry about it. Be yourself and, and that's it. You know, you don't have to follow anybody's trend. You know, when you work on your own car, you do it your way and, and that's it, you know. But it's a nice hobby. It's, it's, it's always challenging and, and, it's, uh, and the people in it are great. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, it's great. It was great meeting you because you're more than just a, yeah, yeah, you're more, you know, you got more layers than just a car guy, which is nice, you know? Well, I, honestly, that's what I tell everybody else. You know, the, the point is that, that- you're special. You tell people you're special. No, I mean, I, I tell people that I'm just a car guy <laughs> and yeah, I got I'm, layers. I'm very special. Exactly. Um, I, I tell people, look, I'm just a normal car guy. I love cars. I'm just like yourself. You know, you're just a normal car guy but um, you have a certain taste, you have a certain love for cars and you want them a very specific way, which is your way. And we've obviously seen, you know, how you are able to, uh, I guess, just get it to that point. And that's what, how you like to enjoy them and that's how you like to see them. 
And um, it's just like this passion that, that it's, it's almost unexplainable. It's really cool to see. One, one, one last thing that I think is a point for people that, that see the cars and see other cars that seem to be perfect, and I'm just gonna tell them they're not. None, none of these cars are perfect. They might look perfect, they might, they might get in their car, which is a similar type of car, and say, oh, my car's a piece of shit. Many of the cars, these cars are kind of a piece of shit too, you know? But you keep on working on them and tweaking them and working, and that's part of the beauty of it. It's a, like a never-ending thing, you know? And uh, you get them to wear as good as you can, you know? Yeah, that's a really good point because no matter how much you work on a car, there's always something you as the owner will know what's wrong with it and what needs to be fixed oh, yeah, and what can yeah. be improved. Oh yeah, they, from the outside, it, it looks like it's perfect, but they all have a little quirk, a little thing, a little this, a little wobble, a little stumble, a little squeak, but you gotta enjoy the journey of getting it. You know what, perfection's boring. Yeah. And that's some of the beauty of this. Perfection is boring. It's nice to have something that has character. And getting it to there is, 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 should, should be enjoyable, you know? There you go. It's about the journey. Yes. <laughs> where, where, where are we, Larry? <laughs> where are we at? We're at well, we're here with my girls. It is mine. Oh, my God. This is... Pinky tie. Yeah, I see that. Um, I went in, went in Miami, I guess. Oh man. Oh, it's I can't wait to eat this. <laughs> this is going down right now. Oh, it's going down. Man, JC always takes care of us. Look at this. Look at me hace falta. Aceite de oliva, limón, más tabaco, otra sangría y un par de vasos con hielo. Gracias. Yeah. Sí. Yeah. I'm gonna get an autofocus. Should I just get some of the lobster right here? Is it yeah, just get the lobster. Yeah. Mm. So good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? We're, we're, we just pulled up to the man's spot. Look at this, we're at Fairco. Look, look. Look at his smile. He, he's, he's proud. He's proud, look at him. Ooh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, so yeah. So as we mentioned before, uh, Juan Carlos has a used car dealership, but when I saw a black Acura NSX parked in front, front and center. Not only that, but it's on HREs. And it's on HREs? HREs. Everything. What? This is not, this is not a typical uh, car dealership. It's got a little bit of everything. Yeah. Huh. Specialty cars. Oh I see. my God. And? You're not selling Camrys. <laughs> Wait, and it's manual. No, uh huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. This is a dream car. 92. 92? This is a dream car. What are you selling this one? Oh, it's yours. This okay, is yours? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so That's excited. why it's on HREs. I'm, I'm jealous. I love this car. This is beautiful. This is one of our favorite cars. Yeah. Oh. What about that? Are you selling that? No, that's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens, but yeah. Um, yeah, that was- All the cool. coolest cars here are yours. Th that's my problem, but I love cars, so when I get something really cool, I never sell it. You know? <laughs> but these are, these are for sale. And, okay. Well, this is mine. There's still some uh, influ or, uh, enthusiast this was, cars. This was for sale, I really, you know, not the R6, but an original car with, I think it's a two-owner car. Oh, all right. So yeah, if you guys are in the Miami area, and you guys want a cool car. Oh wait. Oh, there's more cars here. Wait, that's a roof R turbo. Uh huh. Is this for sale? Yeah, that was for sale. This was for a real, school. real roof. One out of one. The only one ever made by roof, which is 
Yeah. No it's way. Fun. No it, way. It, yeah, the only one they ever made. I mean, this is still pretty cool. This is this is pretty cool because I actually, uh, I've said this so many times, but my 911 Turbo, like I based it off of the R Turbo. Just the look and the feel and the performance of it. I can't believe it. Look at the VIN. Wow. Yeah. I bought this car with uh from the same person I bought the Shelby from, the white Shelby. Yeah. And then is that Lambo okay. for sale? Yeah, performante. Yeah, hey, I know performante. Oh. Right, it's real nice. All the service is done. You're yeah. running out of space. You're not gonna have enough yeah. space for cool cars. And then that's that's uh that's over there are some of our overflow and over there too um is this for sale 350, 370z yep. Yep. When I, when I buy my oh, dude it's manual too yeah, yeah we we pick them we keep that we keep the cream you know okay yeah, very nice car well when i need to buy one of these i'll let you know yep i get them <laughs> i get them not too often but yeah but i get them oh. there we go look at that no way well yeah if you guys need a commuter car if you guys want a cool car look at this rock car, crawler they, they i have sixty five thousand dollars in receipts on this truck oh wow yeah that and they sale? extended huh yeah that's gonna be for sale <laughs> so this they extended the 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 wheels this way and the back wheels that way 40 inch tires uh-huh insane and it, all the like the the fenders are custom and stuff. Really neat. And it drives super nice. 40 inch. This, this car used to be uh, Alex Rodriguez, the baseball player's car. Yeah. I hear Tyler calling for me, so I gotta go look at him. I gotta look, go look for him. He found my car, he says. Okay, let's check this out here. Okay. Oh, the car. International. It's the, the fire truck. Yeah, but, but like. He's got the uh, GT86 over there for you, so you can go ahead and start drifting. Oh. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I'm sure Juan will give you a good price. No way. <laughs> Damn. And it's already Toyota. You don't have to dodge it. <laughs> <laughs> this is sick. What year is this one, you know? I don't even know. I bought it, yeah, I bought it about a couple weeks ago, but we haven't even... That's why the wheels are a little scraped and stuff. So we go through the cars and stuff. All right, there you go. 305-541-3386. We'll be here. Yeah, he'll be here, believe me. Believe me, he'll be here.